My wife and I saw the importance of all these initiatives last summer when we visited a rural village in Henan and met a mother with TB. It was, in some ways, a sad visit. She had been on TB treatment for months, taking 13 pills at a time. But she was still very thin, and she was still coughing and unable to work. We learned it was the second time she'd had tuberculosis. Perhaps if she'd had FTCs the first time, or uh, great monitoring, she would not have become sick again. Most likely, she probably suffered from MDR-TB, but it wasn't known because the diagnostic test was not available. If she did have MDR, then the drugs she was taking weren't the proper medicine, and it's possible that she would transmit MDR to other people. So new diagnostics, more fixed dose combinations, new technology and incentives to ensure compliance, and new system to accommodate new tools, these innovations will attack this disease at the points that give it strength. The patients who are misdiagnosed, the cases that aren't followed up, and the people who are given the wrong medicine or don't complete their treatment. These are the changes that can save people like the woman from Henan and her children. But the most important promising element in this project may be this. We won't need a decade-long effort to bring the results of the project to the attention of someone who can take it to scale. The Chinese government is doing the demonstration, and the Chinese government, with the right proof, can take it to scale. Melinda and I have often talked about the importance of partnerships and philanthropy. It's hard for me to think of a better illustration of what we mean than the partnership being announced today. As we look ahead to the next decade, the leading indicators in the global fight against TB will be the actions of the world's emerging economies, all represented here. It is that urgency and innovation that need to come together, not only at the same time, but all in the same country. You know, the top five countries represent 45% of all TB cases and 60% of MDR TB cases. So these countries have the TB er burden that generates the great urgency, but they also have the talent and resources to drive the best innovations. I was very pleased at the Brazil's uh, announcement by their health minister uh, last week that they're committed to ending their status as a high TB burden country, and also that they want to lend help to fighting TB in Africa. India, for example, has the capacity to make and export FDCs and second-line drugs that will make a big impact in promoting compliance around the world. South Africa is dedicating its research capacity to host important clinical trials of new vaccines, drugs, and diagnostics. The world has lost many lives to infectious disease because the urgency has often been on one side of the world while the capacity for innovation was on the other. I think that era is ending. Every country should feel the urgency, whether it is suffering from TB or not. Every country is capable of innovation, whether it has a high-tech economy or not. And every country can adapt its systems to use the best innovations of others. Where a six-month course of treatment is available, the eight-month course should be abandoned. When FDCs are available, loose pills should be abandoned. When a new test is available that can diagnose MDR in hours, not weeks, every country needs it as part of their national plan. I hope each one of you makes the most of your authority to give your people the best innovations in the world, and I urge you to develop innovations of your own, not just for your country, but for the world. If every government has the sense of urgency and innovation comes from every country, we will get the upper hand against tuberculosis and finally turn this fight in favor of human beings. Thank you.